Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Accutron with their Legacy Railroad. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. So in this video though, we'll be going through an overview of this timepiece, look at some things to consider before purchasing and what you should know. Also throughout this video, if you have any questions, definitely check out the product page as well as the product page where you can purchase the watch and actually dedicate some time with one of our watch specialists as well if you have any further questions. But guys, let's jump into the video and take a closer look at this watch. Now to begin here, let's look at a bit of the background in terms of Accutron. So back in 1960, the watch company Bulova launched Accutron and introduced to the world a movement that was powered by a tuning fork and transistors, making it much more accurate than any mechanical or electrical watch on the market at the time. During its heyday, Accutron was one of the most important and famous watch brands in the world, not only for private consumers, but also for the government who relied on accurate timekeeping abilities for many different projects. Now today, Accutron has been completely spun off by Bulova as its own company, and recently they've been paying homage to their historically important pieces. In this video, we are gonna be taking a look at this reissue of one of Accutron's most important railroad watches, the RR0 which has been repackaged as the Accutron Legacy Automatic. Now the original RR0 was first introduced in 1970 and spec for the Canadian railroad industry with some very distinct styling cues, which we will dive into in this review. Taking a look at the Accutron Legacy Automatic on the wrist, we have a compact case that measures just 34 millimeters in diameter and just 40 millimeters lug to lug. The watch is going to wear and feel like a midsize men's timepiece just at about 34 to 35 millimeters right in between there kind of probably being the actuals here. With this being the case, I think this is a fantastic unisex watch and something that I think both men and women can enjoy. Also somebody who definitely likes to lean into vintage proportions. Now, while the case is relatively thin, the overall thickness does give up quite a bit of height to the large dome sapphire crystal, which sits high above the case for a total thickness of 12.5 millimeters. With a distinct 1970s look, the case is designed with sharp, bold facets along the edges down through the lugs, while featuring a high polished finish throughout. Before we talk about how to set the watch, I wanna point out that this piece does feature water resistance of just 30 meters, so anything beyond hand washing should probably be best avoided. Now, a small push-pull crown is located at that four o'clock position, rather than the typical three o'clock position where adjustments to the watch can be made. Hand winding at the first position, and then at the second position, you can adjust the date, and then at the farthest pulled out point, you can stop the second hand, so hacking seconds here, and then also being able to set precise time. Secured between the 19 millimeter lugs is a black genuine leather strap that is soft to the touch and it's connected with a compact butterfly clasp with a two button release system with the Accutron name etched to the top of that clasp. Now, despite these small dimensions of the case, the strap is long enough for a wrist at 18.5 millimeters without needing to upgrade to a longer alternative. Overall, there definitely is a vintage 1970s appeal, if not just more mid 20th century appeal to this case and the strap combination to be sure. And as such, Bulova has decided to keep this watch true to the original size, showing restraint as many brands start to, I would say, adapt case dimensions for a 21st century market. But I think this is probably fitting for a brand like Accutron, considering just the ethos behind wanting to probably stay true to those classic wearing dimensions and just styling options. One very specific design dynamic that this 70s inspired case features, or rather lacks, is anything resembling a bezel. Sitting fixed to the case then is a large dome sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. And while Accutron has opted to go with many of the original design elements of the original RR0, Updating the crystal to a modern sapphire version is definitely the right decision here. An acrylic or mineral of this size definitely lends itself to exposure to damage due to the way it sits on the case. So having the hardness and the scratch resistance of a sapphire glass is a completely reasonable upgrade in this situation. And they did a good job really allowing it to resemble that of an acrylic type of crystal to kind of have that vintage hue. Now the box shape of the sapphire glass reveals the stark white dial beneath in clear view with very little distortion caused by the curvature of the crystal. Against the bright white dial color, you have contrasting black print that creates excellent legibility 
Large, bold, painted Arabic numerals line the dial starting with zero at the 12 o'clock position, which complies with the Canadian Railroad standards, and then remaining hour markers are assigned to the correct number. To the outside of the large Arabic numerals and along the edge of the dial, there is a minute tracking with bold dashes. More black print can be found inside the hour markers as well, with smaller Arabic numbers ranging from 12 to 23, as well as the Accutron placed inside the second series of numbers and just above the hand stack. A nicely proportioned date window is cut out at the 3 o'clock position, displaying a contrasting black date wheel with white printing. Finishing off the dial is a set of glossy black spade hands and a thin orange second hand, providing the only pop of color to the dial other than this white and black that you're going to see throughout. Both the minute and the second hand have the vintage style curved tips, which is a nice detail. And one noticeable absent from this dial is any type of luminous treatment, so if you need to check the time in the dark, you'll have to rely on your phone here. So that is one downside of this timepiece. In spite of the lack of luminous material though, overall the dial is very legible with great deal of contrast between the bright white dial and the black bold dial elements. Flipping the watch over, we have a screw down half exhibition style case back with a sapphire crystal to partially reveal the movement inside. Starting with the case back itself, just below the exhibition window, you'll find the Accutron name along with a reference to the original RR0's debut in 1970, as well as the limited edition number in the series of 600. Peeking inside the exhibition window, you'll find the movement position, so the balance assembly for the Sleda SW200 is visible here, letting you see that back and forth oscillation. Now looking within the Joseph Bulova collection from Bulova, a very popular uh, just kind of reissue type of design language that Bulova has really started to push more in the last year, there's a lot of similarities here throughout, but also, of course, with the movement being powered here. So that Selena SW200, uh, pretty much the most reliable and probably standard alternative to the ETA 2824. And given that uh, Accutron being a kind of peer brand to Bulova is going to be underneath the Citizen Watch Group umbrella, you're going to get quite a bit of use from those Salita movements, and it is a great alternative and a very reliable one, pretty much setting the standard for the price range from a Swiss-based caliber from an automatic perspective. In terms of serviceability, reliability, you have everything that you want here, but again, very straightforward movement. In terms of actual specifications, we're looking at a 28,800 vibrations per hour beat rate, or 4 hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, so hacking stop in the second hand when you pull out the crown to the farthest position, and has a power reserve of 30 38 hours. So now to unpack here looking at this Accutron Legacy Railroad. In terms of looking over at Bulova, the kind of the sister brand here, if you will, of Accutron, things that I love from that brand are from that Joseph Bulova collection. I think they've absolutely knocked those out of the park, and I think it's allowed this brand, or Bulova, I should say, to really identify what makes them compelling in a marketplace uh, when you're talking about this enthusiast market or people that just love mechanical timepieces. Now, Accutron is a bit of a different story because everything that they've released so far is kind of leaning into that 20th century DNA. And the good news about Accutron is they have a ton of history to rely on and lean on. And with the railroad watch like this, I think they're doing it in a great way. Now, in terms of this watch and just some general things to consider. Now, one of the probably negative points here, or it could be a positive, is that this is a small watch. 34 millimeters wears pretty true to that, if not... I would say 34, 35 millimeters. It's gonna just have this very strange case, pretty compact lugs as well. So from a design perspective, I would not recommend this for anybody that has, I would say even a medium sized wrist and above. A good unisex watch for those that like vintage wearing dimensions or just somebody who maybe just likes a smaller watch in general. I think for those, this will make some sense, but just kind of understand where this one is falling in terms of size. It is small. Uh, there is no loom on this piece, but in terms of having a watch from a railroad perspective, I love just the simplicity of these types of designs, great legibility, kind of the same type of uh, style that you'll see from field watches or fleegers, same elements, large numerals, very nice contrast and readability on the dial, and just some simplicity, but simplicity for actual function. And that is what you're getting here with this railroad watch. Also, you're able to look in the archive here in terms of a watch that is going to be a pretty accurate representation of a former watch from Accutron. The strap is good, but that 19 millimeters is going to limit third-party options. But in terms of that presentation, pretty simple and straightforward. Nice finishing on the case, high polish marks, as well as some sharp angles to add a nice dimension to the case. 
And in terms of how I would line this one up, a nice watch for smaller wrists that also wants something with some vintage dimensions as well as just presentation overall with its dial. All right, guys. Well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon as that is a great way to help out this channel. Also, if you are interested in this watch, definitely check out the link in the description to teddybaldlister.com. We are a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. All of our products also come with a factory warranty. So if anything goes wrong, you are completely covered. Also, we offer price match. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the contact form and we'll be in touch with you. And then again, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content that we're creating, helping to foster a new generation of watch enthusiasts. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.